Merci beaucoup. So uh, now we'd like to ask Tanabe-san to share uh, your comments on his presentation, please. Uh, thank you, Yamada-san, and uh, thank you, uh, Rieti friends, uh, to invite me here uh, to speak at uh, BBL, uh, where uh, I used to moderate quite often uh, more than uh, 10 years ago. So I'm uh, very happy to be back physically at this uh, conference room. And uh, thank you very much for appointing me uh, as, as a uh, commentator uh, to uh, the presentations of uh, uh, my good friend, uh, Van San. Uh, we've been uh, discussing many kind of issues for the last uh, uh, 10 years, several years. Uh, and uh, always I found uh, he, his insight is uh, very much uh, uh, educative uh, to uh, Japanese uh, perspectives. Uh, and today, uh, I have uh, uh, re-recognized uh, his value uh, for, for Japanese uh, uh, people thinking about uh, uh, climate and uh, energy issues. And uh, I'm uh, working for the e EU-Japan Center for Industrial Cooperation, uh, as uh, being introduced, uh, and uh, uh, EU Japan Center uh, is uh, uh, focusing nowadays on uh, green issues, uh, like today, uh, and uh, we we are proud of uh, being a driver uh, of the uh, EU Japan uh, Green Alliance. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Rieti and the center uh, has organized co-organized. Co uh, uh, issues, uh, seminars, webinars on these issues. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, January this year, uh, we have co-organized uh, uh, webinars on carbon pricing, exactly the same uh, theme. But uh, today, uh, Van San has uh, elaborated uh, more deeply, so I have learned a lot. So uh, let me pose you, uh, probably, I have m too many questions. Uh, question number one, uh, EDF uh, is very large uh, entity. Uh, the uh, power generation uh, is 500 terawatt hour, huge. Uh, this is about half of uh, Japan's total power generation. So uh, EDF uh, is uh, much bigger than Tokyo Electric or Kansai Electric. So what uh, EDF uh, is doing uh, is uh, very much impactful on the policy side as well as uh, global uh, market side. And I'm, uh, I have noticed uh, the global stretch of the EDF. Uh, what is uh, the uh, strategy of this uh, global stretch? What is uh, your motivation and what is the key for uh, this uh, success? That's question number one. May I go on? <laughs> uh, question number two. Uh, EDF uh, is supporting, as uh, Van San uh, introduced, uh, carbon pricing. Uh, but uh, I'm uh, curious uh, how this uh, European ETS system has been introduced uh, uh, in conjunction with the dialogue with the utility uh, sectors. Uh, I know, I'm sure, EDF is a winner uh, of this system because 90% uh, of uh, generation is carbon free. But uh, there are uh, utilities uh, who, who still use a lot of uh, fossil fuels uh, who might be a little concerned about uh, this uh, emission trading systems. And uh, I, I'm sure there are such kind of uh, utilities uh, all over the world. Uh, probably some including uh, in Japan. So what, how, how come, how do you uh, lobby this uh, uh, European ETS system from your experience uh, stationing uh, in Brussels? That's uh, question number two. Question number three uh, is, uh, uh, what would you see uh, globally the uh, uh, electricity industry's uh, position uh, on this uh, ETS uh, system, especially 
uh, in the United States. Uh, I, I know EDF uh, has uh, operation in the United States. Uh, there, there, is, uh, there are uh, emission trading by in, in the several uh, states uh, in the United States, but there is no federal system of uh, uh, emission trading in the United States. How do you see this uh, situation? Question number four, uh, what do you see the Japanese uh, situation uh, at this moment regarding uh, carbon pricing? Uh, you may be aware uh, the Japanese industry, uh, represented by Keidanren, uh, has uh, made it uh, clear that uh, they support carbon pricing uh, and even uh, cap-and-trade type uh, emission trading system. Uh, and uh, METI uh, is promoting nowadays uh, what they call uh, GX League. Uh, in my understanding, it is a voluntary uh, framework uh, of uh, uh, including uh, emission uh, trade, uh, but this is just a voluntary framework, and there is no uh, cap and trade uh, system, no mandatory uh, requirement. While the uh, Ministry of Environment uh, looks preferring uh, carbon tax, uh, which is at this moment, uh, I understand, uh, 289円 ですから, uh, about two euro, about two euro per ton. And the uh, Minister of Environment uh, is preferring uh, the raising this uh, carbon tax. So there are uh, many discussions, debate uh, going on this point, and uh, Prime Minister Kishida has been saying uh, he, he would he intend to conclude uh, the consideration on this point. So what do you see uh, this uh, situation? Uh, that's question number four. And question number five, lastly, uh, EDF uh, is famous uh, to have uh, uh, nuclear power sectors uh, inheriting uh, Arriva. Uh, but I understand often the case uh, especially nowadays, uh, nuclear sector uh, has been a bit of a burden in, in terms of uh, companies' uh, profit. Uh, and I, I, I guess uh, that's uh, uh, the same. That's the case for EDF also. So what do you see this, uh, you, you having this uh, nuclear sector uh, within your company? Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Tanabe-san. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have this kind of dialogue with you. We had, uh, as you said, we had this kind of um, discussions in the past, and I'm very glad we have the, the possibility to uh, to have it uh, again now uh, in Japan. Uh, uh, so, regarding the the, the 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 five questions you 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 um, you are um, uh, asking. Um, uh, all are very important questions, I must say. Uh, uh, but um, starting with the, the first one, um, uh, how we have been um, uh, stretching out all over the world, um, and um, uh, what is uh, our um, uh, today's um, uh, trajectory uh, in terms of investment, I would say. Uh, so. Uh, internationally. Uh, uh, historically, uh, our international development started at the end of the 90s. Um, uh, so it was strongly backed by the French government and it came exactly at the same time when the European energy markets uh, were uh, deregulated or started to be deregulated. Uh, the question of uh, investing in decarbonized assets came many years after that. Uh, mainly during uh, our uh, current uh, president and CEO uh, Levy's uh, mandate, uh, so from uh, 2014, uh, which was also the time when we started to support very proactively uh, uh, a stronger CO2 pricing. And as of today, uh, we are investing uh, between 12 and uh, 14 billion euro each year, but it was until uh, recently, it was mainly uh, concentrated in Europe until the end of uh, uh, 2018, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, uh, but um, Europe was um, uh, almost uh, uh, waiting um, uh, about 90% uh, of our activities and portfolio. Uh, uh, and, and in our strategic plan for uh, 2030, we plan to triple 
our international uh, investment uh, with a strong focus on Indo-Pacific, uh, where we have started to, to partner uh, with various Japanese companies, by the way, uh, in recent times. Uh, so that's more or less the way we, we shifted from a, a, a French-based company to a European company, uh, very committed in decarbonization, and then now uh, to uh, Indo-Pacific and uh, global uh, investment uh, with uh, this target of uh, tripling uh, our investments abroad. Uh, regarding uh, ETS uh, lobbying, um, uh, to, be, to be frank, uh, we moved from a septic, skeptical approach at the beginning, um, uh, because uh, we uh, we seen uh, we have seen the, the ETS much more as a burden or an additional constraint on our business activities, uh, especially with the reporting obligations, uh, and we moved to a different mindset progressively. Uh, when we decided to put decarbonization at the center of our uh, strategy. Uh, and with this new strategy, we started to be much more committed in having a single carbon price of reference to drive our transformation. Uh, so we, that's why we have been very active in lobbying during the first big reform of uh, the ETS starting in 2012. Um, uh, at that time, the full ETS system uh, was in a very uh, sorry predicament, I must say, uh, and uh, we were very collaborative with the uh, European uh, institution and uh, the European Commission on this issue. Um, and since then, it's a matter of convergence, uh, a real convergence with uh, the European Commission uh, in particular. So what we did at that time, we set up uh, a, a big coalition um, to, uh, with uh, over energy um, uh, producers to advocate for a change uh, in the linear factor, the, the percentage I gave uh, at the beginning, and to organize what we call uh, the backloading uh, in the most efficient and effective manner. It means to uh, withdraw from uh, the markets uh, a, a huge number of uh, allowances in order to get the price uh, going up. Uh, which was, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the result and the success we had uh, a few uh, months or a uh, year after. Uh, and uh, in this uh, coalition, you had at that time Enel, RWE, uh, Vattenfall. Uh, it was a, a very strong coalition uh, with uh, uh, a leading role of EDF uh, also uh, in this coalition. Uh, so since then, the, the, the ETS system uh, uh, was, uh, has been put uh, back on track and we are very glad with this. Uh, going to your um, uh, third question, uh, I'm trying to, to, to go uh, quickly. Uh, so about the, the electric uh, industry uh, position um, in, in general and the situation in, um, in, uh, in the US in particular. Uh, so globally, the, the electricity industry has moved like us from a skeptical uh, position to a much more committed stance, uh, I would say. Uh, so it's the uh, um, uh, the case in Europe, uh, indeed, but it's it's also the case in Canada, uh, for instance, uh, where f where uh, Hydro Quebec or Ontario Power uh, are also very committed. Um, so if we go uh, to the U.S. now, uh, the electricity sector is not as powerful uh, as the rest of the energy sector. Uh, and uh, uh, for instance, the, 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 the energy sector is very much involved and we see the importance uh, of, uh, of this uh, uh, since the, the energy crisis uh, started. Uh, it's very involved in the shale gas exploration, um, uh, exploitation. And uh, they still have a strong influence uh, um, uh, on national politics. Uh, uh, so that's the situation at national level. At regional and local level, it's different. Uh, you have states like uh, California, uh, which is uh, an early adopter, not only for EUTS, but for many other things. Uh, and in the eastern states, uh, they are, are uh, very much um, um, uh, concerned by uh, the, um, the global warming. Uh, so uh, they, uh, they uh, succeeded in having uh, local or regional or f uh, legislation uh, in favor of um, carbon pricing. 
and uh, the gathered uh, in most of the cases with our RGGI uh, initiative, uh, their uh, their thoughts and their actions uh, in, uh, in, in in terms of carbon pricing. So the federal structure of the United States uh, is helping to have this kind of um, uh, regional markets or local markets uh, gathering themselves. Uh, but uh, for sure, it would be uh, if uh, you, we, you, you, we believe that uh, uh, it uh, could be um, uh, a very uh, key tool, not only for, for Europe, but also for Japan, but also for uh, US, uh, for big emitters. Uh, we believe that it could be uh, much better to have a national uh, coverage, uh, so a national uh, ETS uh, functioning. Uh, at uh, in the in the US, but uh, I'm afraid it's not uh, coming uh, in the uh, next uh, months, uh, ni uh, neither uh, next uh, year. <laughs> uh, and uh, if I go to the situation in Japan, you mentioned uh, that's uh, indeed very interesting for us to 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 look at uh, at this uh, evolution. You mentioned the, the position of, of Kaidan Ren. Uh, which, which uh, we understand as uh, 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 having a view on the long run, um, and uh, Kedan Ren is encouraging uh, cap and trade. That's very interesting. Uh, we believe that there are many advantages. Uh, as I said, the compatibility uh, with EU ETS in the long run is not the less interesting one, uh, but also uh, it gives predictability uh, to the business and. On top of that, uh, I mentioned the keyword uh, ETS system is progressive. So you can adjust uh, your cap and trace system uh, provided you discuss it uh, with the different sectors. Uh, so I think it's that, that's a, a flexible uh, also tool, uh, which is very interesting for all these reasons. I, un I understand uh, what uh, Kedan Ren is um, um, uh, uh, saying on uh, encor and uh, encouraging uh, cap and trade. Uh, if we move to carbon taxes, uh, as I said before, they are less predictable uh, uh, and less progressive in general. Uh, so it can be seen as an additional burden and cost for companies, uh, while ETS is more adjustable. Um, so um, uh, that's one reason. And the second reason I, I would quote also is the fact that uh, is less subject to political changes, but as ETS is a market-based approach. Uh, so it's very important for uh, for uh, private companies to have this predictability and this market-based approach, I think. And uh, last but not least, you mentioned the, the voluntarily market, um, which uh, which uh, which has started uh, very um, uh, in uh, in very recent times, uh, in April. Uh, well, it's a very good start indeed, uh, because uh, as far as I can see, uh, you have more than 400 members uh, right now, uh, which are also large emitters uh, coming and joining this market. Uh, so it's a, it's a good start to unify uh, a growing number of players and to share the same direction, uh, as uh, I explained uh, uh, the EU ETS uh, did uh, for uh, most of the power uh, sector uh, companies in Europe. Uh, but it might be also, uh, we will see, uh, not enough uh, at a certain point in time uh, to, to align uh, Japan with other EC OCDs uh, countries. Uh, which are uh, uh, already uh, having ETS system. So uh, I'm not, as I said, I'm not a uh, full expert in ETS. I've been more lobbying than uh, uh, thinking about the, the, the system uh, uh, itself. Uh, but um, uh, that's uh, roughly speaking what I can say uh, based on my uh, my uh, experience in in Brussels. Mm. And uh, you mentioned also the fifth question, so I don't want to avoid it. It's a full uh, question um, uh, for um, uh, EDF. Um, uh, so the situation of the nuclear sector is uh, very interesting because uh, very often it's what you said. Uh, you see it as a profit loss uh, um, uh, sector, but not all the nuclear sector is profit loss, I must say. Uh, because when you look at the situation, existing nuclear plants are profitable. And with uh, the CO2 price uh, growing, uh, they are com becoming more and more profitable day after day. Uh, so they have been paid uh, many years ago. Uh, so they are running. 
uh, and uh, if they could run more uh, in um, in accordance with uh, uh, very strong uh, or with, with the utmost safety standards. Uh, it uh, under the supervision of uh, the NRA in uh, Japan and uh, the ASN uh, in France, for instance, uh, it's, it's, uh, it creates uh, additional value, uh, not only for a company like ours, but also for our clients, because it means that the, the electricity pr price will, not, uh, will no longer um, uh, jump uh, or be uh, imprevisible uh, as it is now with uh, uh, the energy crisis uh, we are facing because it's much much more uh, predictable in the long run. Uh, I think your point was much more about new nuclear because the existing fleet uh, is, uh, as, uh, as I said, uh, rather profitable. Uh, so nuclear is, is still one of the most efficient way to combine the two keys uh, key issues uh, which will remain uh, in the global landscape for the coming decades. The first one is massive decarbonization. Uh, they, they we are not only uh, with a small amount of uh, electricity decarbonized, we have massive decarbonization. And uh, Prime Minister Kishida said very recently the importance of uh, having a, a, a one nuclear reactor, which would be uh, more or less uh, uh, um, uh, the equivalent of uh, one um, uh, ton of um, um uh, GNL uh, uh, used one, one million, million tons. Sorry, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm uh, puzzling uh, the the, um, uh, the the figures, but that it was very interesting because uh, it it gives a, a, a clear economic signal saying that yes we have something which is profitable and which is uh, massive to decarbonize. Uh, that's the first point. And the second point is uh, the importance of uh, security of supply uh, with uh, renewables which uh, will remain intermittent also in Japan uh, in the future. Uh, nuclear is providing a, a, a strong base, uh, base load. Uh, uh, so it's uh, very useful uh, to, um, uh, to ensure a, a higher level of security of supply. Uh, so all in all, uh, it means that uh, it will cost uh, because you need, if you want to uh, add additional new nuclear power plants, it will cost. But that's what we did, uh, in fact, uh, 40 years ago when we decided uh, to uh, start our nuclear fleet uh, or to launch our nuclear programs, uh, both in Japan and, uh, and in France. Uh, so uh, part of the story can uh, also be uh, revisited, uh, even if uh, the price is high, uh, the return on investment has been uh, quite good uh, for many years afterwards. Thank you. I hope thank I you. covered thank your, you, you your points. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for your discussion. Uh, it was quite interesting uh, conversation between you. In fact, the timing is running out. <laughs> And uh, we have got uh, so many questions, but uh, I think that the, your discussion has covered almost all the uh, questions here. But if I may, if I may, I would like to ask one question to Difu-san. Who decide CO2 emission value? Who decide emission value? Do you have any answer for that? No, uh, in fact, we have got uh, one interesting question. Who decide, Who decide CO2 emission value? It's the EU ETS system, yes. uh, which is um, uh, organized uh, as a, uh, with um, uh, part of uh, legislation, uh, which is uh, defining the, the, the goal uh, and the level of uh, um, emissions or permits or allow allowances which, are, uh, uh, which can be used. And then uh, when you move to auction, uh, that's another issue. Uh, auction is uh, is uh, free, so, uh, <laughs> so the, the market is uh, is working uh, like that. Uh, all allowances are capped. Uh, that's the, the way it works. Uh, and then uh, it's the case for the power sector. Uh, now uh, we are we have an auctioning system, uh, which is a, a, a much more market-based system uh, than the cap. Uh, the capping on, all on allowances we had at the beginning, which uh, has been decided by the European institutions. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is a hands of goods. Mm -hmm. And, and right. maybe maybe another yes. related question: Are you hedging 
to respond to fluctuation of the uh, CO2 pricing? Uh, you, we, we have, uh, we have uh, coverage uh, of the matter uh, at, uh, our, um, uh, in our trading uh, activities. Uh, for sure, but uh, I must say that's not the most important part because uh, we are uh, an industrial, uh, and as an industrial, uh, we see the ETS or the carbon pricing, as I said, as a driver. Uh, we have to in instruments to to uh, to cover our risk, and uh, indeed trading is uh, used to do so. And uh, carbon market are a market like any other market. Uh, within the energy sector, so for sure we are we are doing s doing this too, but it's not seen as um, uh, a key um, uh, 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 tool to uh, to gain uh, profit. Uh, let's say. Okay, thank you very much. Now it's time to close. I would like to thank uh, both of you, Dufur-san and Tanabe-san, for their experience, uh, excellent presentation and comments. So, uh, participants, please answer the questionnaire in at the bottom of the viewing screen. Thank you very much for your participation on our BBL webinar today. That's the end of the uh, seminar. Thank you very much indeed.